6. Sam Ratulangi PB1600 In the latter part of 2018, approximately seven miles off the shores of Myanmar, a notable discovery was made. The Sam Ratulangi PB1600, a sizable container vessel. Despite being constructed in 2001, the vessel bore the wear and tear of time, resembling a weathered and rust-covered relic. Curiously, upon closer inspection, it became evident that the ship was devoid of cargo and, even more perplexingly, lacked a crew. Remarkably, the Sam Ratulangi PB1600 had last been reported near Taiwan almost a decade prior. The Myanmar Navy found themselves confronted with an enigma that seemed straight out of a ghostly maritime tale. Investigations soon revealed that the Sam Ratulangi PB1600 had been en route to a shipbreaking facility in Chittagong, Bangladesh, with the assistance of a tugboat. Clues in the form of cables at the bow of the vessel suggested an intention to tow it somewhere. The whereabouts of the tugboat, however, remained a tantalizing mystery. Had it met a similar fate? Could pirates have played a role, or had a tempestuous storm claimed both vessels? Subsequently, the tugboat christened the Independence was located along with its Indonesian crew. These crew members admitted to Myanmar naval authorities that they had indeed been towing the Sam Ratulangi PB-1600, but a fierce storm had caused the vessel to break loose. With this revelation, the cryptic puzzle was finally unraveled, dispelling the ghostly aura surrounding the abandoned container ship. 5. The Octavius It was mid to late 1775 when the captain of the Herald, a whaling ship, spotted a mysterious ship drifting off the coast of Greenland. The mysterious ship was the Octavius. It had been some 14 years since anyone had laid eyes on the Octavius. The rumor was the ship had sailed from England to China. The captain of the ship allegedly made plans to find the famed Northwest Passage, a northerly water route that linked the Atlantic to the Pacific. The crew of the Herald decided to board the Octavius, and they were horrified at what they discovered. As they made their way down into the deck, the crew of the Herald discovered the 28-man crew all dead. But they were not just dead, they froze to death. Perhaps the most eerie discovery on the ship was the captain of the Octavius in his quarters. He was rumored to have been found at his desk with a pen in hand. The ship's logbook was in front of him. He too had froze to death. When they looked around, they noticed a woman that froze to death while holding a young child. The horror was too much for the crew to process. Someone from the Herald grabbed the logbook as evidence and they got back on the Herald. Sadly, the pages from the logbook of the Octavius were lost and the crew only had a few pages left as evidence. When the log was reviewed, it was discovered that the Octavius sailed north from China to Barrow, Alaska. Somehow, the ship navigated the Arctic and made its way to Greenland. The Herald returned home and they shared their tale. The Octavius was not seen by anyone after the reported incident with the Herald. It was written that the last entry in the logbook for the Octavius read, 11th November 1762, we've now been enclosed in the ice 70 days. The fire went out yesterday, and our master has been trying ever since to rekindle it again without success. His wife died yesterday. There is no relief. 4. The Mary Celeste the Mary Celeste was a boat that left New York City on November 7, 1872. On board was Benjamin Spooner Briggs, the captain, his wife, and their two-year-old daughter. There were seven men on the crew and their plan was to sail to Italy. The ship's cargo had 1,700 barrels of industrial alcohol. What happened next has led to a mystery over 150 years old. A British ship, De Gracia, saw the Mary Celeste drifting in the Atlantic. The Mary Celeste was discovered some 400 miles off the coast of the Azores, an island chain in the Atlantic near Portugal. The crew of the De Gracia was stunned to see the ship as it had taken off just eight days before the De Gracia set sail. The crew of the De Gracia was curious and they boarded the Mary Celeste and what they found was shocking. 
Not one person was on board the Mary Celeste, and the lifeboat was missing. Also, the ship had some six months' worth of food and water, which was plenty for the voyage. The cargo was untouched. The ship had a flooding issue where three feet of water was on the ship's floor. That was not a dire situation, and the crew could have repaired the leak responsible for the water coming into the ship. The crew discovered the last log entry by Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs for the ship was November 25th. The crew of the De Gracia decided to bring the ship to Gibraltar, a British territory in Spain at the entrance of the Mediterranean Sea. The Mary Celeste was to be examined by the British Vice Admiralty Court. The reason the crew of the De Gracia brought the ship to Gibraltar was to salvage the ship. By doing so, the crew was entitled to the insurance money on the Mary Celeste. At the time, the insurance money was roughly $46,000. The British officers in Gibraltar were suspicious of the crew of the Mary Celeste. Were they trying to pull a scam? Did they do something sinister to Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs, his family, and the crew of the Mary Celeste? A three-month investigation led to no evidence of foul play. The insurance company, however, decided not to pay the full $46,000 to the crew of the De Gracia, but a fraction. During the early 2000s, Anne McGregor and oceanographer Phil Richardson decided to investigate the fate of the Mary Celeste. She told Smithsonian Magazine in 2007, There's so much nonsense written about this legend, she said. I felt compelled to find the truth. What she found was fascinating and absolutely baffling. She found no evidence of a mutiny or even an attack by pirates. If there was a mutiny, then the ship would have been in worse condition. The ship was by no means in peril due to the flooding. The captain and crew were experienced and abandoning ship was the last thing they wanted to do in the Atlantic. McGregor and Richardson's research led them to believe that there were some equipment issues with the Mary Celeste. First, it was believed that the chronometer, an important piece of equipment for navigation, was faulty, and it had them 120 miles west in the wrong direction. The flooding in the ship was more than likely caused by faulty ship pumps. They were found disassembled on the Mary Celeste, leading McGregor and Richardson to believe that Benjamin Spooner Briggs was concerned about the flooding and wasn't sure if it would get progressively worse. However, the truth about the fate of Mary Celeste remains a mystery. Benjamin Spooner Briggs, his wife, his daughter, and the crew were never found. What do you think happened to them? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 3. The North Korean Ghost Ships a truly bizarre situation occurred on the western coast of Japan during the late 2010s. Fishing vessels were discovered in the Sea of Japan by their coast guard. These vessels were believed to be fishing boats from North Korea due to the markings on the ships. What was discovered on the vessels shocked the coast guard. Human remains were found on the boats. The crew died under mysterious circumstances, but they were in an advanced state of decomposition. The Japanese Coast Guard knew North Korean fishing vessels go out to catch squid and king crab. Sadly, the North Korean vessels are not equipped with proper equipment like GPS navigation systems or even a reliable motor. Another frustration for the Japanese is that North Korea will not send out any information about missing ships. Those that go out and are lost are never reported, which is incredibly heartbreaking for the North Korean families of the missing fishermen. Why were so many vessels being found with dead crews on board? One theory is that North Korea's sanctions due to their nuclear program has caused a food shortage in their country. Fishermen are forced to sail out and get larger hauls to ease the shortage. Another problem is that North Korea's need for cash led them to sell fishing rights off their own coast to China. That means Chinese boats are in competition with North Korean fishermen. Also, North Korea's government has allowed fishermen in North Korea to keep their surplus. These incentives have made desperate people make decisions that are highly dangerous. With food being short and equipment being less than up-to-date on the vessels, these fishermen are in over their heads with their fishing. A lack of supplies and exposure are more than likely the culprits of their deaths. 
In recent years, the Japanese have found North Korean vessels with fishermen still alive on them. However, the North Koreans are sent back to their country. 2. Urang Madan The story of the Urang Madan appeared in newspapers in the United States during the 1940s. Urang Madan is from the Malay language and means Man of Madan. There's a saying in the world of ship naming that naming a ship after a man is considered bad luck. It's the tale of a ship and a crew that met a horrific fate. Some believe the story is true, while others claim it's a ghost story. You can decide. Sometime during the 1940s, an Italian ship was sailing 400 miles southeast of the Marshall Islands when they picked up an SOS message from a ship known as the Urang Madan. The message sent was, We are floating, second officer dead on bridge, captain and chief engineer dead in chart room, probably whole crew dead, partly the ship's position was also provided. The Italian crew was trying to contact the Urang Madan, and the last message from that ship was, I am dying. The Italian crew discovered that the Urang Madan was a ship used to transport Chinese troops. They tried to find the Urang Madan but had no luck. The next day, they found the Urang Madan some 50 miles from where the ship claimed to be. The Italian ship hailed the Urang Madan but there was no response. A crew from the Italian ship decided to board the mysterious ship. The Italian boarding crew was met with death. There were bodies everywhere, and they all had something in common. All those who were dead had horrific facial expressions. It was as if they experienced the ultimate horror, but what did they experience? The next stop on the ship for the Italians was the wireless room where the operator was found dead. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew on board the Italian ship noticed something on the Urang Madan. Smoke was coming out of the ship. They called to warn the boarding party. Their boarding party scrambled to escape the Urang Madan. They jumped into their boats, and then there was an explosion on the Urang Madan. Three more explosions followed, and the Urang Madan sank as the Italians watched. All that survived was their tale of the mysterious ship with the crew members who died with the most horrific expressions on their faces. 1. Beichimo The Beichimo was a vessel built in Sweden and launched in 1914. When it was built, the name of the ship was Angerman Elfven, but was named Beichimo circa 1920 when it was purchased by the Hudson's Bay Company in Canada. It was a company that made its name in the fur trade and later in the retail industry. It was a vessel that sailed at times to Scotland from Canada, but the Beichimo also sailed the Western Arctic. It would deliver supplies to the Northwest Territories of Canada. During the winter, the ship would dock in Vancouver. It was late 1931 when the Beichimo was sailing from the Northwest Territories region to Vancouver. The ship was caught in a horrible storm near Barrow, Alaska, and the crew decided to anchor at a spot. They soon realized that they would have to spend the winter there and not Vancouver. They decided the ship was not an adequate home for the crew during the winter. Some crew members left the ship and a few stayed on board. The crew on board had to make sure that ice did not form around the rudder of the Bay Chimo. November 1931 arrived, and another storm hit the area where the Beichimo was anchored. The storm apparently sent the vessel adrift. The captain and crew thought the ship had sank instead of going adrift. They later received news that the Beichimo was spotted some 44 miles south of their location. The ship was stuck in ice. It was cleared of its cargo, and the crew decided to leave the ship in the ice. However, the ship had a different plan. It pulled the most amazing disappearing act. The captain and crew made it to Vancouver in 1932. They were ready to complete some paperwork about the ship when they learned it was spotted nearly 300 miles to the east of Barrow, Alaska. From 1933 until 1962, the Bay Chimo was spotted by various vessels. During this time, it was also boarded at different times between 1933 and 1939. The ship was spotted in 1962 by the Inuit in the Beaufort Sea. 
Finally, in 1969, the Beijimo was seen frozen in an ice pack. That was the last time the ship was seen by someone. What was the fate of the Beijimo? It more than likely sank and has yet to be discovered. Thanks for watching. What are your favorite stories of ships that disappeared and reappeared? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.